In this work, we discuss out-of-distribution detection algorithms with neural skin cancer classifiers. Out-of-distribution samples are examples that are not present in the distribution of the dataset used to train the model. For example, say we have a deep neural classifier trained over skin cancer images. If we present it with an image of a dog, it may predict this image as being melanoma, the deadliest case of skin cancer, with high confidence. In fact, in our tests, exactly this image of a dog was predicted as melanoma with a softmax value of over 90%. Obviously, this is not a desirable characteristic of a skin cancer detection system. So, deep neural nets may output overconfident predictions for out-of-distribution samples, and the out-of-distribution detection problem consists of recognizing and in particular differentiating such examples from the ones presented in the training distribution. However, detecting such samples is quite challenging, in particular for skin cancer, even though some of the images can be quite different indeed from the training images. In this work, we present a study of OOD detection algorithms for deep neural classifiers trained over a skin cancer dataset. In particular, we examine three state-of-the-art algorithms, ODIN, Mahalanobis, and Gram OOD. In addition, we present an extension of the Gram OOD algorithm that generally performs better than the original method. In brief, we may summarize Odin and Mahalanobis methods as follows. First, Odin uses softmax with temperature scaling as confidence on perturbed inputs. It means the method looks at the model's last layer. It also needs to fine-tune the temperature and perturbation in order to detect the OOD samples. In this sense, it requires access two out-of-distribution samples in order to work. The Mahalanobis algorithm computes the Mahalanobis distances layer-wise from class-conditional feature distributions. Unlike Odin, Mahalanobis looks at the entire model. It also trains a logistic regression to detect the OOD samples. In order to work properly, this part of the model needs to be fine-tuned on OOD examples. In summary, ODIN requires OOD samples to work, and Mahalanobis can work without looking at OOD samples, but doing so may result in weaker performance. As we present an extension of the Gram OOD method, we will describe it in some detail. First of all, like the Mahalanobis method, it looks at intermediate feature activations to detect the OOD samples. It uses the Gram matrix to compute layer-wise correlations in order to find anomalies. There are two main advantages of this method. First, it does not require access to out-of-distribution samples in order to train or fine-tune the method. Second, it's agnostic to the model. It works with any pre-trained model. Let F sub L refer to the activations at layer L, having shape CL and HLWL. Essentially, each feature map is flattened and the layer is organized as a matrix. We compute the Gram matrix of this layer as shown in equation 1. That is, we compute the correlation between feature maps. The method also introduces higher order Gram matrices as shown in equation 2. The idea behind that is to recompute this with multiple values of P in order to highlight prominent features. Let's review the overall algorithm with a diagram. First, pairwise correlations between feature maps are computed using high-order gram matrices. The original method uses an order from 1 through 10. Observe that the method uses both convolutional and activation layers. Next, from the gram matrices, we compute the class conditional layer-wise deviation. This basically allows us to compute how much a new sample deviates from the max and min values computed from G over the training data. Finally, the method computes the total deviation of a given test example by summing its layer-wise deviations across all the layers. It normalizes this value by the expected deviation, as computed using the validation data. Note that this data was chosen as a subset of the training data, and therefore this expected deviation does not depend on seeing any OOD examples. This normalizing term is applied to weight the contribution of the layers according to their importance. Finally, 
The OOD detection of the test sample is determined according to a threshold previously defined to achieve a given true positive rate on the training set. Out-of-distribution baselines typically provide the true negative rate at a true positive rate of 95%. The extended method presented in this work, Gram OOD star, introduces a new normalization step into the original method that essentially normalizes the Gram matrix at each layer. It is important to ensure that the layer-wise deviations are computed relative to the same interval regardless of the layer. As a result, we can consider only the activation layers, reducing by a factor of two the number of assessed layers. Furthermore, for skin cancer, we found that we do not need to use the higher order gram matrices, which again significantly reduces the computational time. An overview of the gram OOD star method is presented in this figure. Observe that only the activation layer is considered and a normalization block is included after the gram matrix computation. The rest of the method is still the same as the original. We now present the main results we achieved in our paper. First of all, we use the ISIC 2019 dataset as our in-distribution set. Next, we present six out-of-distribution datasets. A and B are images of the skin. C is ImageNet. D and E are corrupted images obtained according to Bissado et al. And F is human histology images. We apply the methods to all of these OOD datasets using four different competitive CNN models. In this table, the results for MobileNet and DenseNet are described for Gram OOD, Gram OOD star, and the unbiased Mahalanobis in terms of average TNR at a true positive rate of 95%. The unbiased Mahalanobis does not fine-tune the method in the comparison pair. Please refer to the paper to check results for Odin and fine-tuned Mahalanobis. As we can see, the Gram OOD-based methods achieve the highest average true negative rate at a true positive rate of 95%. Also, the extended method presents a better performance than the original one. For ResNet and VGG, the results are similar to the previous ones. Observing the OOD datasets, the derm skin is the most challenging one. This is to be expected since it's the distribution closest to that of the training data. Regarding ImageNet, we expected a higher result, so this shows that this task is challenging and there is still room for improved performance. We also use OOD detectors to detect the images contained in the ISIC 2019 test dataset that are labeled as unknown. Without using external data or hyperparameter tuning, Gram OOD star achieves an AUC ranging from 69.3% to 70.2%. This is competitive with other submitted methods on the platform that do use external data to train the OOD detector. To conclude, we show that the Gram OOD based methods perform better for skin cancer than the other OOD de detectors that we examined. Our proposed extension to Gram OOD approach is simple, and it improved performance for most OOD datasets presented in this paper. That means that while the normalization step plays a key role, we found it still possible to improve it by exploring different normalization rules. Also, in general, we believe that in future it will be possible to improve results further by training models that can implicitly detect OOD samples by taking into account the information contained in the various other orders of gram matrices. We'd like to thank the financial support of the Brazilian research agencies, CAPES, CNPQ, and the Foundation for Supporting Research and Innovation in Espírito Santo, which funded the author's registration for this conference. We would also like to thank CIFAR, the Canadian Institute for Advanced Research. The code is open sourced and available in the linked GitHub page. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.